Hello, my name is Brittany Washington, a graduate writing consultant at OU's Writing Center, and today I will give a presentation on the effective strategies for creating tables and figures. This presentation will cover a variety of topics to support your efforts in creating tables and figures in your research papers, manuscripts, or even research reports. First, I will discuss the appropriateness for using tables and figures, distinguish the differences among them, then cover each element in great detail. The presentation will wrap up with a review of the information and strategies discussed throughout this presentation. I want to begin this presentation by illustrating the differences between an effective and an ineffective table. If we look at the two tables, we can see that table B is easier to read and follow. However, if you look at table A, you might get distracted by the plethora of lines, which is unnecessary when creating tables. It looks sort of messy, and it's really hard to distinguish um, the differences between the variables included in this um, table. However, um, with table B, it's organized in a way that is easy to, easy to follow and draw distinctions between the different variables included in the table. So now on to pie charts. This is another example I want to demonstrate. Um, when we use pie charts, we are often trying to show the differences in amount or proportions between variables. However, um, with table B, it's really hard to distinguish the differences between each element referenced, especially with the smaller proportions. However, um, table A, you can easily see the differences between the three variables referenced um, in this pie chart. And the relative amount is very easy to comprehend. Research papers are often based on large amounts of complex data that can be summarized and easily communicated using tables or figures. During the writing process, it is important to think about the most efficient way to communicate information to help you develop and support your argument. Tables and figures should be constructed in ways that yield information neatly and efficiently. Tables and figures should be clear yet visually appealing. Also, it is important to note that um, the data in a table or figure should not be a repetition of the data found in the text. Tables and figures are great ways to highlight trends, relationships, and patterns that may be too difficult to do through text. Sometimes data points can be too numerous or complex to be, to be conveyed in sections of your papers, especially when space is limited. Figures and tables can effectively help you convey complex and numerous information without muddling your text. Although tables and figures have very similar intentions, they have very distinct purposes. So now we're going to dive into um, tables. So, Tables allow you to present large amounts of data in a clear and concise manner. Since tables often contain large amounts of complex data, it is important to make sure that your tables are easy to read. Well-designed tables are organized well and present data in ways that are easy to comprehend. A well-designed table will allow your reader to help you understand, will help them understand its contents without referring back to the text. This slide here um, contains several elements that constitute an effective table. All tables should include a label that is located above the table, a descriptive title that should be italicized, headings that describe the contents of the table for rows and columns. I'll pause here for a second for you to take a deeper look at um, the elements of tables. So here's some more information on 
how to conduct, excuse me, construct a table. So again, it is important to label and number tables and number them in the order that they are introduced in the text. It is important to note that all tables should be introduced in the text. A table should not be included in, should not be included in your paper if they are not introduced in the text. Tables should be centered um, in the middle of the text and should not flow around them. So now we're going to go and talk about figures. So as previously mentioned, tables and figures have distinguishing characteristics. So when using a figure, it is important to consider the size, resolution, and overall attractiveness of the figure. A well-designed figure is compelling and takes little time to understand. As we went over the components of a table, we'll do the same with a figure. Figures have considerably less components than tables, but as with tables, figures should be labeled and include a title. They should also have legends that effectively describe the contents of the figure. Notes should be included to describe um, the figure as well that are not apparent um, in the figure or in the title or even legend. So figures can take on many forms. A figure can be a graph, a diagram, or even a photo. Um, so again, um, when thinking about that, it's important to be simplistic. Um, it's important to use um, an image that your audience can grasp clearly and quickly. Um, as I said, with um, tables, um, figures should be numbered and referenced in the order that they appear in the text, and text should not flow around. They should be centered um, in the text. So as I said before, um, a figure can take on many forms. Um, the most common figures are graphs, and within graphs, there are several different um, components. Um, a graph can be a bar chart, a frequency histogram, a pie chart, a scatter plot, or even a line graph. Um, so when thinking about what graph you want to use, it's important to think about the intent of each graph and what type of um, data um, they best present. So first we'll go into a line graph. So line graphs are great for illustrating changes over time whether short or long. Then on to pie charts, we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, they show relative proportions, specifically to the relationship of the number of parts to the whole. Um, they are good for showing big picture relationships. Um, they're not really effective at showing fine distinctions in the data. Um, and again, you wanna limit your categories to five to seven, anything over that will be ineffective. You have next a scatter plot. Um, those illustrate individual scores on two variables and also demonstrate relationships between the variables. Now we have a bar chart. Um, they are useful for illustrating relationships between independent and dependent variables. Um, as with pie charts, they can be used to display proportions. So now we're going to talk about how to integrate your tables and figures with your text. Um, the placement of tables and figures is often genre specific. Um, so it's important to refer back to the conventions of, you know, whatever um, you're studying or if you're presenting, well, not presenting, if you're submitting an article to a journal, you want to make sure that you're following those conventions. Um, you really use the text to help guide your audience um, to interpret the information included in a figure, table, or graph. Those, um, the text really helps you tell the reader what to expect um, with the table and figure and also convey its importance. So a way of introducing um, tables or figures in the text, um, you could say as shown in table one, their results are shown in table one. Table one shows that. So you want to uh, make sure again to refer to each table or figure in the text. 
Um, it's important to um, avoid sentences that directly direct you to the table. So you want to describe the contents of the table and then um, direct the reader to that table or even figure. You just don't want to say table one shows the, the results of X, Y, and Z. You really want to help the reader understand what the table, excuse me, the figure or table conveys. So I want to talk a little bit about strategies for creating, well, a strategy for creating an effective table or figure related to pre-attentive attributes. And these attributes really help um, the reader um, grasp what is referenced in a table or chart. So um, they really help the reader visually process the information almost instantly. Um, some attributes include tables, excuse me, include figures um, that are colorful, um, that have varying um, size widths or um, lengths. And so I want to give you an example of this. So here we have um, a figure that represents um, different DNA strands. And um, as you can see with table A, it's really hard to distinguish the proportion of difference. However, with table B, they have used color to indicate that they are there are more G's than C's. So that's a really effective way in um, allowing the reader to instantly see, hey, there, there are more C's than G's in this figure. So now we're um, here at the wrap up. So um, again, tables and figures are effective ways to communicate complicated data points in a succinct and quick fashion. Um, a well-designed table or figure um, is easy to um, comprehend. Um, they are compelling, attractive, um, and really allow the reader to grasp the intent quickly of you know, the table or figure. Um, your audience should be able to interpret or comprehend your table without much background information. As previously mentioned, um, there are several differences among tables and figures, um, despite the fact that they have, you know, this common goal of visually presenting data. It is important to keep those, di those differences in mind when um, thinking about ways to incorporate them in your text. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Um, thank you so much uh, for watching our video.